All right. Blackout. Yes. The blackout hour has come. And it's that time of the night, 10 o'clock. Tuck the kids in. Kiss them. <laughs> Kiss them for first drink of choice. Yep. And um, enjoy enjoy the show, man. Uh, Blackout, this is a show that we put together, myself and Ian, executive produced by Troy, and it was meant to be unfiltered and uncut, things that we can't talk about on Market Mondays, mm -hmm. but are needed, things that are important to our culture and the world. This show is uh, not suitable for children, mm -hmm. first and foremost. Um, it's also not suitable for sensitive men. Especially y'all. Uh and entitled women. So we're, we're, cro we're crossing all the boards. We're checking off. <laughs> We've got to keep a fan base, yo. we got to pick a struggle. Hold on now. we got to be equal opportunists here. That's true. We Entitlement is going to be dropped off quick. We can't be Derek Jackson. Um, yeah. Yeah. Even though I saw somebody trying to be Derek Jackson in your comments. Um, we'll talk about that later on. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, Blackout. Um, this show is for entertainment purposes only, although it is very educational. Take everything with a grain of salt. This is about entertainment, ladies and gentlemen. But if you listen hard enough, you can learn something because we may tell you a joke, but we will never tell you a lie. So with that being said, mm -hmm. we have a lot to talk about this week. I'm um, coming off of the tornado of <laughs> Dash last week. Shout out to Dane. Shout That's out to cousin, Dane. Yo. Dane, um, different. One of one. Yes. One of one. Some people in life are one of ones. So this week, we have our first female guest, ladies and uh -oh. gentlemen. It's something that everybody has been asking for, April Mason. We will be bringing her on in a little bit. Um, but before we start that, there are some other topics, let's just say, we, got that, um, we should address. We should address. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about it. Um, okay. Long overdue. <laughs> Long overdue. Would you rather pay cash for your house or get a loan? And let's say you have a $3 million or let's say you have $3 million or $1 million, um, saved, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, would you go broke and paying off a house? Like if you have uh, a loan balance, right, of like a million dollars or something, like would you go broke and paying off the loan of a house or are you <clears throat> going to ride it out with the mortgage? Um, I know there's two two trains of thought, but for me, I would pay the money and be debt free. Um, like when my mom was like, I visited Xander, um, my mom had a little humble flex. She's like, yo, I had a mortgage payment in like 12 years. I was like, that's not bad. That's a different level of freedom. Um, I, I think uh, everyone who is against that Dave Ramsey, no debt thing. I got a little theory about y'all, but I ain't going to say it this week. I'm, I'm going to let y'all live to summer. What's but, the theory? Uh, y'all scamming. Who Anybody who say debt, whether it's good debt, bad debt, I keep saying it. If if they came to you at Investors and you was like, yo, man, I got a house for $5 million. You're like, yo, uh, get on stage. I'll pay it off right now. I actually write the check and the check is clear. I'm like, oh boy. They'll take the check. No, they took the chart. You shouldn't have said the shit about Tupac, yo. <laughs> Let my boy live. No, nah, but also back to your theory, though. I do have a theory, though. Record profits are at a high. The music, uh, the music industry got Spotify by the boss. I do think they're trying to take back the masters from all of our icons, though. They got Kanye out the way. Now Diddy. It's only a couple more doors. You need to get the masters back from to control Shug, everything. Shug, Shug locked up. Death Row locked up like. They got us catalog for nothing. Um, so I'm with you on that part for sure. Like they're, they're making their rounds trying to go collect the masters real quick. But um, I would definitely pay off the house so I can be debt free. Now we can have a conversation if you want to. The keys brought up. Do you ever fully own your home or not? The landlord. Is good. <laughs> hey, <laughs> you always go have somebody governing over you. So to not this. have that bill coming every month. Definitely takes a lot of pressure off for sure. What about just, you? Well, you know what? I'm realizing something. You learn something every day. And I, mm -hmm. I'm realizing that a lot of people are going, a lot of people go broke because of a house. This is something that I'm realizing, right? Yeah. Because you you buy the house, 
you have the mortgage for the house. Then you got to furnish the house and you got to do all kinds of landscaping and all that. Then it's the constant the upkeep is the constant upkeep of the house, right? You got your, 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 um, your electric bill, you got your gas bill, you got your cable bill, you got all these different things, right? Then you gotta, you gotta, uh, cut the grass. Then things break over the course of time. Then you gotta repair the sink. Then you gotta repair the, the, the dryer. Then you have to pay property taxes. So the bigger the house, the bigger you can have thousands of dollars a month in, in utility bills if your house is big yeah. enough, right? You can have fifty thousand dollars a year in taxes if your house is big enough, right? You can have twenty thousand dollars a year in upkeep if your house is big enough, okay. let alone the mortgage that you're paying, right? So now you what you it's it's one of these things where two things happen. You lose opportunity costs because all of this money is just coming. It's like yeah. hundreds, it's like a hundred thousand dollars every single year that you're coming out, right? What's the opportunity cost that that money was invested, right? From right. going from going down to zero, zero because this is money that you're just spending as opposed to a hundred thousand invested, right? We talk about stocks. So now let's say over the course of ten years, that, that's that's one million dollars that you invested. That could easily be two million dollars. That could easily yeah, be two point five yeah. three million dollars, right? As opposed to now that's zero, yeah. and anything could happen. Now your income starts to fluctuate. You go down. You still got to pay. You might you might try to sell your house. The house isn't selling on time. So now you so now you're running through your savings. So now you before you know you you burn through savings. You burn through savings, and that's something I, I'm just coming to the realization like, oh, this is how they get you. Yeah, this is how they get you right. They get they get you At every they you, angle. They making you think that if you it, it's a status symbol. If you don't have a big enough house, then you feel inferior, right? So now you're trying to live up to the Joneses. And now you like, okay, okay, okay. And then it's like, before you know it, you are either broke, have less money than you thought you should have mm -hmm. living on very thin margins, or you could have had way more money. Like, let's say if you would have downsized, live yep. modestly, but just yep. been super cash heavy, super cash yeah. heavy. All out of control, right? Yeah. Super, super no cash stress. heavy. Cash always going to be king. Super cash heavy, making moves. You got, you got... A, a deal comes up. You might not have. You might not be liquid enough to to do the deal if if, you, if all your money's in your house. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So that's kind of a long winded answer, but I, I just wanted to say that because, like I said, that's one of these realizations that I'm coming to to realize. Like, okay, the American dream is to you know get this house and do that, but what if that's not really the dream? What if Kanye had this thing right? Remember when Kanye sold his house? Kanye, Elon was... <laughs> Yo, remember when Kanye sold his house, moved to the apartment? Before he, he had a backpack, enough. he was like just moving around, backpacking, going yeah. to different... Sleeping in his friends' houses and stuff like yeah. that. Like, I'm like, okay, now I get it. Yeah. Now, Because I mean, if you think about houses are still a banking product. That's the number one product in all the banks they want to sell you is the mortgage. Um, even like, I remember when I was, I don't know, like 16, 17, like for landscaping, like I was like kicking my dad's rocks in front of his house. He's like, you know, I'm with some fucking rocks. Call. I'm like, I don't know. It rocks. No, 10 grand. I'm like on rocks. So if you're out, like, if you got some square footage, I've known some people that spend 20 grand on shrubbery. That's a fact. It's like, bro, it adds up fat. And it adds crazy up. Part. You can't hide and say you don't have no money. <laughs> no. It adds, and then you get a pool. You got to clean the pool. So much shit, right? And then it's like, so it's like, okay, now when I when Kanye moves into an apartment, hmm, okay, yeah, business write off. You could write it off on, yep. on your on your taxes, right? Now the easy pile for twenty bucks out the apartment. Fire, yes, jewels. <laughs> hey, mama, you should have kept your mouth closed. You did too much talking, yo. <laughs> Gotta be quiet, silencio. You know what I mean? Sometimes hey. in life, you got, sometimes in life, you just gotta chill. You gotta chill out. Yep. People and I know, I know, and I know, Jules. Shout out to her. Um, once again, I'll never rejoice in somebody else's downfall, but I think that it's a lesson that you know. Sometimes in life, you gotta chill. You gotta chill. Well, shook so you can't be all in the video. Like, yo, play your part. Like, even when people like, uh, yo, what Ian at? Yo, I can't be everywhere y'all at. Yo, like. It's a moment for me to pop out, a moment for me to focus. That's <laughs> a fact. Yo, we at your home. Yeah. Home. <laughs> yeah. Like, <sighs> even that, like, okay, now you got the home, you got the shrubs, you got the mortgage, cabinets. Now you got to travel. Now you got clothes. It's like, oh, we didn't do all this work to end up in the rapper cycle. I am cool. That's a fact. I am cool.
And then you got, and then you got your, your kids got to live a certain way. Then you got to send them to school. And then before you know it, the number one rule in life, as far as building wealth, is to keep your expenses low no, while your yeah. income increases. The gap in between your expenses and your income, that's the money that that's what you call discretionary income. That's yeah. money that you can invest. Mm -hmm. That's just like 101. The problem yeah. is that most people, as they make more money, their expenses go up as well. A so lifestyle they, is real. Very few people are going to keep their expenses at the same level while their income is going up crazy. Mm -hmm. Their expenses are going to go up crazy as the income goes up crazy. The yeah. problem with that is that you don't really have enough money to invest, to really, you know, get out the game. You might have money to invest, but you don't have enough money to invest to get out the game. And yeah. God forbid your income goes down. Mm -hmm. Now you're, you're in one of these cycles, right? So yep. all of the entrepreneurs, all the hustlers that's on the come up, that's something to consider. That's some game. That's some game for you that um, you can do what you want with. But just be be cautious and be mindful and don't feel like you have to live up to somebody else's expectations or impress somebody else. Yeah. I mean, even for the first four years we did the show or well, first three and a half, like I was in a two bedroom condo. He was like, are you crazy? You can go get it. I was like, what is it? Just look what I got to pay. I pay this for the year in one trade. I am cool. I am straight. Keep the expenses low. And then you get to helping people. Da, da, da. And you look back and be like, okay, what was all that for? Like for what? So yeah, to, to the gentleman who asked this question, you, you get a million, three million, get a house, pay it off, pay property taxes, get, get your furnishing, go to restoration hardware. They're going to hit you over the head for 50, 60 grand easily. At least. <laughs> At least. <laughs> baby carriage, three grand. I'm like, y'all don't have regular baby carriages no more? No regular kids' furniture? No, this is the almond wood from Lake Como. Spe <laughs> specially crafted by Margella and Michelangelo. Fuck, all right. <laughs> oh, Christ. People. Uh, these people yeah. never, some people in life never learn. Yeah. Never learn. Yeah. Um. Okay. So let's talk about Candace Owens. Oh, man. Wow. Wow. She, she knew the end was coming. She started making a black run. Joe, you did this. Joe, she, this is your fault. She tried to pivot. She tried to, she tried to, once she did the um, Breakfast Club, she did Joe yeah. Button. She tried to, she tried to, you know, pivot, but she got fired from, what was it, the Daily News or the Daily yeah. Beast? Daily Beast, is that what it's called? The Daily Racist. <laughs> was Candace Owens a diversity hire Who and knows? got let off in a DIE player? But she got she got fired for um I believe anti-Semitic comments. I'm not even sure what she said, but she got fired for anti-Semitic comments. And now she's um what is she doing now? Figuring it out? Yeah, I think she's figuring it out. I mean Candace's brand value is high enough. Um, but my thing is like, should we embrace her? Should who's we? The black community. When you say embrace, what do you what do you mean? Welcome her with open arms back to the cookout. What you mean? Well, nobody ever leaves the cook. I feel like if you black, what she fe female Uncle Ruckus shout the candy. I'm just saying, as far as you black, there is no um welcome back or kicked out. Nope, you can't you can't get canceled, right? So it's it's one of these things. No, we, <laughs> wait, you can get canceled. Public cancellation. Got you. Okay. Without okay. the boys being involved, but um, I don't th look. It's one of these things, right? Should she be championed as a hero for Black culture? No, of course not. Yeah. Um, but I mean, she's still Black, so she's still here. She's never. She. She. You can't. You can't. You cannot not become Black. Kanye proved that. Right, like you can't not not become Black. No matter what Kanye did, no matter what he said, no matter who he married. He's still black, right? <laughs> but can't. Kanye started with us. Candace was anti us from the beginning. Candace has some of the wildest takes. Like even Alex Jones and Tucker Carlson will hear Candace is like, "What the fuck is she doing?" Like, no. But what I'm saying is that you could be a sellout as a black person, but you're still black. Like Clarence Thomas, oh, yeah. right? Clarence Thomas is still black. He don't. He doesn't. Have, he doesn't champion any black values. He hasn't never been. a 
nothing in black culture. Yeah. Well, he's still a black, he's still a black man. Yeah. Right. Like there's 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 deplorable black people and there's high moral black people, there's despicable black people, there's mm-hmm. low life black people, there's high level black people. That's what we got every black person is not a good person. Yeah, I'll, that's what I'm trying to say. Like yeah. there's 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 white devils, but there's black devils. There's black devils. There's you black calling him a black devil. Who? Come on, give us a, give us the headline. No, no, but I'm just saying when I say a devil, I mean somebody that has devil characteristics, right? Yeah. So there's black devils. Every black person is not a good person. Yeah. So the whole idea of like even embracing her back in the fold, well, what does that really mean? We don't have any fold. We don't have a fold to embrace her into. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's like it's, it's no fold. God damn. <laughs> there's no fold. Okay. Let's be honest. Yeah, we gotta be honest. There's no fold. This just this just that when we start to realize that, then we'll be better. There's just a lot of like we could make a fold and finally stand up for this shit that's not right. It's too many suckers, it's too many snitches. Look, it happens with every movement. The Black Panthers, who took the Black Panthers down? Snitches from internally. Like you know, I'm saying, like you could look through every every single movement, whether it's NOI, Black Panthers, whatever, like there have always been black people internally that ruined the organization. This goes back to slavery with Harriet Tubman and slaves that was telling the slave master that she was trying to get off and, and start, a, start a, a revolt and all that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, we can never fully embrace every single person. Yeah. It's impossible. Once you realize that, you'll be better off. Just because somebody's a black person doesn't mean they're a good person. <laughs> it just doesn't. So Candace, I don't look at her. I look at her like it's a oh, black she's person. Like the Daily Wire. Thank you, Troy. She's the Daily Wire. I look at her as a black person. But I look at her as somebody that sometimes she says some 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 reasonable um, things. Sometimes she says some good things, and a lot of times she says some stupid, idiotic things. And it's just like Kanye. Kanye, a lot of times he says good things. He's made classic music. He's done a lot of idiotic things. But he, I, he's just still a person. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I don't. He never got kicked out of black. He said slavery was a choice. He didn't. I never kicked him out of the black race. I don't have enough power. I, I don't have power to kick somebody out of the black race. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I was off Kanye for that though. But then the GDs got to him and had a little had a little talk. So about about that or just in something else. <laughs> well, he's on the free, he's on the free Larry Hoover campaign. Yeah. Shout out Jay Prince. <laughs> Jay Prince. Like, hold on, you're going too far now. Shout Jazz, you know. Uh, hey. uh, Craziness, yo. You taking Candace on a five hundred dollar date or now? Who? Candace. Candace Owens. <laughs> yo, stop, stop, stop! I swear to God, I love this show, yo. Stop. For man. moments like that, oh, hilarious. Certain, certain things I could never do, man. Yeah. Certain things I could never do, like you know, like look, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have a power to kick somebody out the race. But yeah. if if you have cooned, if you have cooned on any level, that's funny. You you gotta pay. You gotta pay for your cooning okay. publicly, if, publicly. If you had to pick between ra- running a mega hat and taking Candace on a five hundred dollar date, which one are you doing? I'm taking I'm MAGA all day. I'm taking Candace on a day. I, I I'm not. I'm gonna burn before I, I wear a mega. I walk through the fire before I wear a mega hat. That's Never high level. Out of this galaxy. Got That's you. the cool level. If you are a black person and you walking around with a MAGA hat, you can support Donald Trump. I, I, yeah. I don't have nothing against it. But if you wear in a uniform, that's like putting on a uniform. Like if you if you wear in a uniform, bro, you might as well just wear the Confederate flag headband. So Kanye, a high level cool before the GDs got to him. I don't think Kanye is mentally stable. So I'm gonna okay. give him grace. I'm gonna give him grace. grace. I don't think he's mentally stable. Candace Owens, I can't, I can't give grace to. Yeah, we can't. Yeah, Candace I, is very smart. I, I think that she is um, mentally sound, and she's purposely making these decisions. Yeah, and Candace gonna land on her feet too. Like, oh, Jess, you, you, Jess with the mess. You lucky you got there early, because boy, she would have been in that seat. Yes. All right. Without yeah. further, without further ado, let's bring our guest to the stage. Yes. Hey. April. Mason, how hey, are you? I'm wonderful, darling. How are you? Good, good, good. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. 
of course. For sure, for sure. It's the whole black and red theme you're going with. It's like Valentine's Day. Hey, that's actually, what I thought you got. Actually, not Valentine's Day. So I'm a new restaurant tour. Uh, this is my passion project. So I opened up a year-round Christmas themed cafe. Oh wow, that's fine. Where's yes. I located? it? I I left Atlanta after 20 years and I moved to Ohio. <laughs> okay. What part, what last part, year. What part of yeah. Ohio? Huh? What part of Ohio? I'm in, I'm about 45 minutes from Pittsburgh, about an hour and 10 from Cleveland, a little place called Boardman, Ohio, next to young, close to Youngstown. Okay. Got you. Yeah. So I came, I, I was born and raised in San Francisco, Bay Area, moved to Atlanta for 20 years. And you get to a place where it's like, you know, you want a little settle down. I did the whole living in the high rise, the whole sex in the city lifestyle. Yeah. And I was like, you know, let's try something different. And the Christmas cafe kind of happened. So, so, um, and I, so I had to come down tonight during this time to ch- make sure the employees had their stuff in order for tomorrow. Very important. Very important. Yeah. Well, uh, April, Mason. So how this came about was we have not had a female on um, Blackout yet. So I put, really? I put, a, yeah, you're the first. Congratulations. Okay. All right. So I put a post on Instagram and I said, um, who are some guests that you want to see on Blackout? And at least five different women suggested you so they said that you are the voice of feminine energy these days oh okay that's what what they're telling me they're saying like you 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 did another podcast you went crazy i know you're a best-selling author but five different women suggested that we speak to you so we listened to what the audience wants all right and um i reached out and you was gracious enough to come on so thank you for coming well, thank you so much for the invite. And thank you to all those ladies that recommended me. I appreciate that. For sure. For sure. Yeah. So, all right. This is a conversation that I think is going to be interesting on a few different levels. Um, Because like I said, it's good to have a woman's perspective on things. So the first the first question that I have is, um, why is it often perceived or the reality difficult for a woman that prioritizes her career um, to find love? or to be highly desirable from men. Okay, so why is it why do women prioritize their career? W- women that prioritize their career, mm-hmm. why are they why are they less um in demand? Let's uh, say I got I got what you're saying. As opposed to women that that aren't boss the boss babes, boss chicks. You know, I think a lot of it has to do with there's not the balance. I call it the queen and the princess energy is what I call it. And there's a balance to that. And we have to look at what the people that came before us, the women that came before us. So despite what people like to think, a lot of our grandmothers and great grandmothers were not happily married. Uh, Matter of fact, one of the things that having my Christmas cafe has done, I draw a lot of elderly people. And I had an older black lady come here maybe about two weeks ago. And she was telling me, you know, it was a time that we couldn't walk across, come across this side of town. Right. And as I'm talking to her, relationships came up and she told me how long she was married. And I and I said, oh, what's the key to a happy marriage being married that long? She says, well, to be honest with you, I only know one happily married couple. She had to be in her 80s. And I think what's happened is the women that came before us, they wanted to ensure that we were not um, looked over, that we were educated and that we had everything that we needed so we wouldn't be in a position that they were in. But in them teaching us to go ahead and be career oriented and get educated so you don't have to be beholden to a man because you got to remember a lot of women when we married back then because we didn't have any rights a woman couldn't even get a credit card in her name until the 60s it was president reagan who put it into law that we can even get a business loan single women at a point in time were not even able to get a bank account so a lot of the women that came before us were more um there were women that were looking f- to survive so instead of us dealing with what they dealt with, what they did was they instilled, go get educated, go get educated, go get educated. But what they missed, and I don't think they meant to do it. What they meant was take your girl with you. Mm. They pushed so hard for us to be 
uh, women that are independent of a man because of what they went through. And I think we live in a society now where all these men are talking about women are submissive, women are submissive, but they're not paying attention to like the, like the women before us. A lot of them were overly submissive because they needed to keep a roof over their head. And if you think about it, you see times when daddy passed away and his other families from other sides of town. <laughs> she so goes, they they wild, yeah. Like, oh. yeah. So awesome. were those women really submissive at that level that men are asking for women to be now, or were they that submissive out of survival? Mm -hmm. So that's a question that we don't really ask, but to hear so many women and here, um, you know, we have a multicultural, um, you know, backgrounds of people that come here. So one of my ladies, she's she was had to be in her 80s. She walked by and she said, that Emma, forget on my damn nerve. And I said, oh, man, did one of my employees do something? She said, no, I'm talking about him. And I said, oh, your husband? She said, yeah. I said, how long have you been married? She said, 62 years. I said, what's the key to staying married 62 years? She said, I didn't want to go to jail. <laughs> she said, I couldn't do the time. And this was a Caucasian lady. So um, a lot of them, when I sit down and I talk to our elders, a lot of the women were not happy. She said, I became a wife at 18 and they did all of the things. And so white women, black women, that when they come in here, they're so proud of me. I didn't understand why they were so proud to see me do this. And I started listening to them. They never had the opportunity because they never had rights. They didn't have the education to do so. So that's why, in my opinion, why women prioritize their career, because those that came before us didn't teach us that there could be a balance, if that makes sense. Makes total sense. Um, but in this era, how does a woman be a boss babe and still have like kind queen energy inside of a relationship to have like best of both worlds? Like what tips would you give don't. to the woman for that? She don't. You can't be a boss chick and a boss baby and a boss bitch and be that. You have to be what I call a feminine CEO. That's different. Okay, feminine more. The feminine CEO is a woman in business, not a business woman. Mm, okay. That's that's fine. That's different. What that is, is her womanhood comes before anything. It comes before her career. It comes before kids. It comes before a man. Her womanhood and who she's being to herself comes before everything. So my businesses are all around my lifestyle, not my lifestyle around my businesses. So I think what we've done is we have uh, took pride in I'm a boss. You know, I got my coins. I'm about my back. No, let's take pride in what it means to be a woman first. And then all of the other things are added bonuses. I think mm -hmm. that's where there is this discrepancy and proving that I can do what a man can do. Someone sent me a video yesterday of a well-known fitness um, guru. And she uh, she said, when a man asks you, can I can I get your bag? And she she put the bag up and put it over her head. That's not a flex. <laughs> that's to, if that, that's just my opinion. It's not a flex because you can do it because what we're not paying attention to as women is we're putting so much stress on our bodies just to prove that we can do what you can do. So let me ask you this as far as submissive women, right? Yeah. Um, that's a topic of discussion. Uh, yeah. Um, and the trigger word. <laughs> it's a trigger. But why, why is it a trigger though? That's why I, I, I just, I, I just want to get to I just want to get to this vibe of, um, Submissive women, like, yeah. What's your thoughts on this? Why is it such a triggering thing? Um, how do women fall into that submissive bucket? Like, what? How does a man um, foster an environment for a woman to become submissive? What's your thoughts on that whole situation? Well, see, it's a triggering word because a lot of times submissive be coming from jokers that don't have what it takes for somebody to be submissive to them. So what it's is, like, what what it take? What does it take? What does it say? <laughs> happened, because here's the thing. When we are in the presence of a man that makes us feel safe, feel seen, feel heard and protected, we naturally acquiesce. You don't have to ask for it. Any man that asks for, for why aren't women submissive and he has these conversations all the time, you ain't him. That's you. Yeah. <laughs> you <just> with us. <laughs> yeah. So it's a woman. So it's a it's a woman's natural. You think it's a woman's natural vibe to to want to be submissive? We need masculine containership. So here's the deal. 
feminine women, we love masculine leadership. Like, and when I say leadership, I'm not talking about being domineering. Anytime I'm with a man, I don't care if it's somebody that I'm dating. I don't care if it's with my son. I don't care if it's with my driver or my security. My brain is, I'll just be all over the place. Just be vibing. I don't think about anything. I don't care. And it's to the point where um, I rem- when my driver and security and I are out, he got to literally, he's like, he, he pushed me back because I just be looking at stuff that I don't have to, I don't get to look at when I'm by myself. I'm just like, oh, that looks so nice. And I'm just all over it because I know he has it. So until, unless you provide that, you ain't going to get no woman to submit to you because we naturally do. But the other side of that is, most women today do not have even male platonic friends that are masculine. Mm. So they don't even know how to receive it when a man, when a man comes in and do what a man does. It becomes, oh, that's toxic. It's not toxic. This is just what men do. But because in your workplace, in your friend group, at your church and everywhere else, you are not in communication and, com- and in community with masculine men on a regular basis. So you don't even know what to expect. So now I hear this man coming in and say, no, babe, we can't do that. Oh, why are you trying to tell me what to do? No, no. If you chose him, you should have vetted him to know that if he says no, his decision is based upon something that he sees that you don't, but you chose him. If you can't submit to who you chose, he's not the problem. You are. That's a fact. That's a fact. Uh, For the fellas, can you tell them how they can foster an environment for physical safety, emotional safety, which is really key? and how to make a woman feel seen. Heal, the, heal, heal their traumas with their mothers, first and foremost. What's that, what's that mean? I, so all, although I have the cafe, um, I have been coaching men and uh, women and high profile men for years. Women more so on the forefront, and I do work with high profile men more on the back end because it became word of mouth and it just spread. And one of the things that I find is they had issues, they had mama issues, or they had issues to where they never saw their mothers chosen. Chosen? Chosen. They never saw their mother being chosen to be somebody's wife. Mm-hmm. So now they don't know how to foster the things that you just said because they never seen it with their own mothers. So it becomes a, a problem. And instead of them just being that masculine man, what they try to do is be overbearing to try to get women to do things because they don't have a real example. That's why a lot of podcasters that have these conversations, I'm like, child, give me the mic because y'all don't, y- your mamas wasn't even chosen. Damn. So you ain't even had no, that in there. <laughs> like you ain't yeah. lying though. <laughs> but am I am I lying though? Damn, you know, you know, I ain't never think about it like that, but that is a fact. So Damn. how do you have these conversations if your mama wasn't ever chosen? Damn. You don't have a blueprint and there's some anger there. That's why do you think these men hate on Russell Wilson so much? They tell us to choose better. Sierra chose better. Now he is simp because he took her with the with her kids. Well, nobody took your mama with her kids. Damn. So you don't know what that feels like. Damn. And I'm not saying it to be malice or mean, but yeah. it's the truth. So now he is simp, he this, but how can you tell us to cho- choose better? She did. She learned from her mistakes. She got a good guy. Oh, he made the wrong decision. Stop moving the dog on goalposts. We, she did what, what men tell us to do. Take a better man. But be, but you cannot give a woman that safe space until you've created um, that healing place within yourself to really deal with your issues of maybe not seeing your mama chosen. Because if you had a good father. But, but what about, okay, that's a, I, like I said, that's extremely insightful. But before we go to the next topic, what what's the inverse of that? What about women that the women. their mother, their mother was never chose, right? Or have that's daddy issues. Like they got, they that's don't, they don't probably know how to how to be a, a, a wife, how to actually submit, how to actually fit inside an ecosystem because they've only seen masculine energy from their mother, their single mother, right? Um, so how about that side of the coin? It's the same thing. Listen, when I when I retired from working with the women in 2021, the internet went crazy. Even Kevin Samuels, rest his soul, he was like, y'all done called April Mason to quit. And she's been doing this for a long time. What it is, is... Women that haven't seen that, 
it's it's easier now I'll say this it's easier for a woman when she's ready to listen to get into that role than it to, it can typically be for a man the reason being is if a woman we are community creatures you guys don't really do community like that so the reason why my followers follow and majority of my women are women like exactly what you said is because there's something that clicks at one point that says hell i keep coming home by myself i'm raising these kids by myself my back hurt i'm starting to get all of these other issues okay something is off men typically don't say something is off and go seek the help to figure out the something is off so i would say it's easier but i'll find i'll say this men don't typically do it until the woman that they want rejects them and then it becomes what's mm. wrong with me and then it makes them do the inner start doing the inner work when you keep yeah. doing the same thing but it's typically some type of rejection that triggers them into jump starting that healing process but women do it all the time i, I would tell you this judge joe brown i was like why do these women fight me so hard it's like i'm trying to show them how to win and but when people are so used to losing they don't know when you put them in a position to win and judge joe brown's words stuck with me he said the reason why you work so well with men is because at some point in a man's life he's been coached by the time a man comes to you and pay you he's ready for clear instruction and i said yeah that's typically what they do they want to know how do i not pick this kind of girl anymore because typically they've been married three to six times two to six times by the time they get to me and it's like a wake-up call because you got to remember when you're dealing with high profile high earning men they don't they don't they don't take the time to learn how to be successful in relationships like they do in business mm. so they don't have the that those social uh relationship skills so that you're supposed to have they don't have that, but they're amazing on paper. So, and he said, but then the other side is women are used to being caught. So I have to literally strip them down to say, all right, tell me who you are. Don't mention your degree. Don't mention how much money you have. Don't mention your kids. Don't mention any organizations you're a part of. Don't mention anything that required you to do something to become it. Tell me who you are minus that. That's where, this happens. Are you, you attack it. No, I want you to figure out who you are outside of what you accomplished. And so once we go through that, the women, they don't like me. <laughs> they don't like me much and too much after that, because I have to really dig in. And a lot of people don't want to do that work because we create these personas of who we are based upon what we can do, not what we can be. And I teach from a being standpoint versus a, um, you know, doing so what so to answer your question, it's this it's the same thing that women have to do that men have to do. But for to answer your question in for a man to create a safe space, he got to be healed. But if you make a woman feel seen, heard, protected and provided for, there's nothing we won't do because that's all we really want. And it doesn't make mean you got to make six figures. That's whole six figures thing is a, a trip to me right now. But the man that can make a woman feel like that, he's golden. That's the guy you want. So you don't have to make six figures. Mm -mm. You know, how much money you have to make? It's not even about a dollar amount. It's about a lifestyle. Okay. We got to stop the bullshit. Stop, lifestyle. Stop the, stop the okay, cap. What? Let's stop the Capricorn. Let's let me explain. Let me, let me explain. Let me, and this is why I say this, Ian. Let me, this is why I say that. This. Here's the deal. If we look at the average American man, he don't even make $60,000 a year. The average American woman don't even make $50,000 a year. If you look at the labor statistics, why is everybody tripping off the six figure thing? If the average, we're not talking about the one to 10 percenters. We're talking about the average American don't make oh, six figures. I was looking at a study, I believe last year, it said that only 21% of men in America make $100,000 a year. Out of that 20%, only 8% are black men. So it's not necessarily the dollar amount. I think what women, I think women are having a hard time explaining what it is that they want. Six figures don't mean he generous, first and foremost. You know, when you what? are around, you know, money, men with means, that don't mean they generous. Like, that's why I said it has to be the lifestyle. So if we're all, if the, those in that income bracket is making similar, 
your lifestyles may be similar. You should be looking for somebody that has a similar lifestyle than you. There's nothing wrong with leveling up, but here's where the ladies miss it. And this, this is the part that they don't like when I say. Mm. They want the six-figure man, but you don't provide the feminine experience in exchange. Exactly. So exactly. Talk that about was, it. Talk, talk that's about the it. Problem. Talk the so talk. Finding men to take care of you is easy. I mean, it's like I meet men that make half a million dollars a year, like like I'm drinking this hot apple cider. That, that's the easiest thing to do. Those are the men that the women want. They come to me for. I'm like, but do you provide the feminine experience in exchange? What's the feminine experience? What, that sounds like a Hold that's on. something that you could sell. A feminine experience. Yeah, I <laughs> listen, I, listen. Let's great talk novel. Go ahead. <laughs> so what I did is I wrote a list. I wrote a list of a oh. hundred things that women bring to the table. When she, now that there is a disclaimer. You have to be connected to your femininity, spirituality, sensuality, and wisdom. This is not for basic chicks. This is not women that's not doing the inner work because everybody will feel like they will, this, this means she's talking to me just because you go to church don't mean you're spiritual. Most women are not sensual because they're not connected to all their five senses because they don't sit down. They don't even walk fast in the store. So if you are not a woman that's really deeply, heavily connected into the four these four pillars, you can get there, but this list may not just be for you just yet, but you can work on it. So I always got to give that disclaimer because they think spirituality means going to church. No, mm -hmm. it does not. So these are the things that I say a feminine woman brings to the table that causes a man to want to give her all his check. And it is emotional he support. Up all what? His check. Oh, don't read all that list. The <laughs> all I, all no, the checks. Oh, I'll take what? Go on, no, go ahead. No, all, his, all, all his money and all the access codes and passwords. This woman breaks emotional support, compassion, patience, femininity, spirituality, sensuality, and wisdom, understanding, encouragement, inspiration, respect, kindness, empathy, joy, happiness, stability, loyalty, honesty, confidence, in, confidence, intimacy, affection, intellectual challenge, mental stimulation. She's good for your peace, legacy, and your portfolio. She's bring warmth. She has humor. She's spontaneous. She's uh, she has she's committed. She's passionate. She has vision. She's flexible. She's adaptable. She's agreeable, but she will challenge you. She has determination, perseverance. She's mature. She has discretion, authority, but yet she uses this which she needs it. She will challenge you. She is a woman of uniqueness and nurturing, and the list goes on and on. That woman, you meet her and she's good for your peace, legacy, and your portfolio, and she's leveling up that bet. She she gonna get the past code. Well, the thing and about she it she knows how to be a queen and a princess at the same time. The thing she about it, the, the thing about it is that yeah, I think it might be a little extreme to just give somebody everything, but you're gonna make sure they're taken care of for sure. You're gonna make sure they're taken yeah. care of. Yeah. Sure. It's sure. like it's it's going it's going it's going to be a feeling of I want to do this because of what she's being to me, not what she's doing, but what her presence is being to me. And I learned this working with men. I remember I watched before I started working with them. I, I started to watch how they would transform in my presence. And I didn't understand what that was. And there was one that um, I, he wanted to date me. This was back in 2018. So he said, hey, but we're really good on paper. I need to know if we'll vibe, you know, in person. So he flew me out and I had to learn in my career working with men. I learned early on just because there's a good business synergy. It doesn't mean it's romance. Mm -hmm. And um, I learned that early on. So I said, OK, well, you know what? We do have a good business synergy. Let me see if there's an attraction. So I got there. but well, no attraction. Yeah. But what he said was um, I, we, he started talking about what he was getting what he was going through now this is a very high profile first name basis only type of guy so we get i get there we having a good time we watching tv you know he he's saying oh my god miss i can't believe you're here right there wasn't a love connection but i watched this man transform because he was getting ready to lose every in his mind lose everything because he was getting ready to make a move that disconnected him from his money source. And so he was having this conversation with me and I'm looking at him like, okay. And he said, why are you looking like that? I said, I don't think you know who you are. I said, do you not know who you are to the world? So I'm going in like, bro, listen. And yeah. so I said, this is what you're going to do. You're going to write a book and you're going to do this. I'm like laying it all out. Right. And so I watched him over the three days. 
he didn't try anything. I, got, I think he kind of could tell by my energy, it wasn't a love connection. But every morning he would come over into my room, knock on the door, Mason, all right, I got this idea. All of a sudden, all of that creativity that that feminine energy brings, it started just causing him to come up with all these ideas and making this money and all of this stuff so for the three days. Next thing I know, I'm upstairs. He said, Mason, come downstairs. He said, I never washed the dishes in this house. I always had a maid. I'm in here washing dishes. He in there cooking all because of the girl energy. I get back to Atlanta. He texts me and says, thank you for letting me down nicely. He said, send me your bank account information. I want to send you $10,000 for helping me figure this thing out. And what ne what's the next point I need to make in my career? Bruh, that $10,000 had to, wasn't worth a drop in the bucket for what he made from what I shared. Ew, where has it where has it gone i'm telling you i'm telling you he that's what he did and now i'm not mad at forgetting it but um what, what's the so it's consulting it's consulting no 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 actually he's married. mastermind i'm with that no yeah he's, he's actually married now because what he did tell me when he got ready, he said, if we start dating now, we will be married by June. That was February. And he said June. It wasn't a love connection. But he still, he, once he's, we realized it wasn't that, he kept going. And now he's married. He's been, he's been married for about four or five years now. But oh, damn. that's when I, I called one of my girlfriends. I said, girl, I need a whole business with this because I see what it does with the girl energy. So that was 2018. Fast forward to 2022. I was at Rick Ross's house. I was uh, I went to the boss up conference 2021. I'm always the one in the front. And so I went to the conference and I was at Ross's house having this conversation and it was all of this money in the room. I was the only woman left in the kitchen and it had to be millions of dollars standing there. And I'm talking to them and they have been married a few times, going through divorce and I'm watching how they're paying attention. And they were just, it was just attentive. And there was one of the guys that said, well, I just went through a divorce and I gave her everything. I said, did you give her what she asked for? Or did you give her what you what you thought she wanted? Did you ever ask her? He said, no. I said, if you're such a great catch, why are you divorced? No, 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 said, no, no, we can't do that because there are toxic people out here. Well, no, 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 I, no. But I, I'm, on, I'm giving a piece of the story, but I'm only going on what he said he did. If you never asked your wife what she needed from you, but everything you telling me you giving her is material things, are you the best husband that you think you are? Because if you did not ask, he said, "Well, I never asked." Her. I thought I was talking. They want, though. Huh? Do most women know what they want, though? I believe if you, it all depends on the type of woman y'all choose. Y'all gotta ask yourself who y'all choosing, because if you choose the right ones, we know what we want, and it's not hard. And to be honest with you, most women can't articulate what they want. But it's what I go said earlier: seen, heard, protected, and provided for. What, Those what, are the four things. Let me ask you a hot topic: What are women? What are women willing to put up with? From a high value, a, woman, from a high, a high, a high hate, value woman. A high value. All right, you would you would a guy that's out here that's really getting to it, right? Mm -hmm. What do you have to put up with, and what? Should you mentally prepare yourself to be ready to be put up with? Ah, okay. Now that guy, now we're talking about a different demographic of guy here. Yep. Yeah, what, that what? guy, every, I've always put it like this. Everybody wants a Barack, but they can't be a Michelle. There's a different level of woman, that, a mindset that you have to have to be with a, not just a high uh, earning man, but a high value man. Because a high earning and high value are two different things to me. But if you're talking about all these women talking about, I want that top tier guy, baby, that's a whole nother ball game. Like that's not just the guy that you work for that work for UPS. This is a man that he is a visionary man. He's a legacy driven man. You have to be good for his peace, legacy and his portfolio at the yes. same time. So with that, are you willing to sacrifice? He's not going to be here all the time. Are you willing to understand it if he's that guy? there's going to possibly be women around. Doesn't mean he's doing anything with them, but that's something that you have to ask yourself. Are you the type of woman that can walk in the room and get and be the queen and get into the rooms that he can't get in? Because the queen can make moves that the king can't. Can you be that woman? Can you be the woman that says, 
I have to stroke his ego because actually he's more Clark Kent than he is Superman. To the world, he's Superman. But at home, he's really Clark Kent 95% of the time. Can you respect him in the same way in his Clark Kent as you do with Superman? That's different. D working with and dating high powered men, it's a different ball game that most women, um, they I don't think that they can really handle. And it's not that he's being mean, it's not that he's not being attentive, but when he's on his grind, especially if he's coming up, not the kind that are already kind of settled, you know, they're grounded so they can make time. I'm not talking about him, I'm talking about y'all wanting the ones that, you know, you see him on Instagram, you see him on all of the stuff and you like what you see. Well, it's a lot to that's come with time. that. You know, he might be able to make some time for you at certain at times, but you're going to eat. <laughs> and if you got your good one, you're going to have your little weekly allowance. Uh, and you go, he's going to take care of you. But do you provide the feminine experience in exchange for that? So, so you got to follow up or you good? Uh, you, you got a question? Yeah. <laughs> I, I got to go to the men for the men who are acting like they have value or they're not. Can you give them some tips to be better? In relationships, business, overall, so that they can get more of what they want out of their dating life. Um, don't wor worry so much about being high earning as you do high value. The money gonna come. The money comes when you have in character. When you work on that integrity. When you work on your spirituality. When you go now, I don't mean just going to church. When you work on healing your whatever your wounds are. When you work on um, being a man that honors his word. He's consistent. He's a man that, um, you know, your, your patterns lie, your efforts are in alignment. Work on those things because when you work on the things that make you high value, which are internal, the money gonna come. And what happens is you once you have those things, when you meet, you're gonna meet somebody on that road and she's going to see who you are on the inside. Mm. And she's gonna see, mm, he don't just have potential, but he's actually living as if his potential. Cause I teach women, you don't, we don't deal with men with potential cause y'all don't deal with us with potential. I knew y'all was going to look up. <laughs> think about, okay. Think about it. You, y'all do not deal with a woman with potential. If Oh, she got a pretty face, she, but she big, she a big girl. She got the potential to lose the weight. Y'all don't know. Y'all just going to say, Oh, she cute. Y'all might smash, but you want, that's not what you see for yourself. Y'all don't get with women on potential. So I tell my ladies, don't get with a man on potential. You got to be living the dream. Cause y'all know y'all don't. Y'all don't get with nobody. Oh, she got she got potential to be pretty. Let me just do a little something, little contour up face or something. But no, when you, say, when you say when you say I, right, when you say the man can't have potential, he has to already be established. No, I don't I didn't say that. I ain't say that. All right, what you say? What you I say? said he has to have. He, he can't just be have potential. He has to be operating in it on some level. Meaning, say you a truck. You 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 say you want to be a truck driver. You can't be talking about it. You gotta you do have something. To you gotta do something. You, have to yeah, you gotta get up the ass. You gotta have some. Yeah. You gotta have some motion going. Some you don't, motion. You don't, have, you don't have to be where you're going, but you gotta yeah. have. Right. Rule of physics: right. stay in motion, no matter what. How, how yes. do you feel? How do you feel about polygamy? I think it, for people that that is for it, it's for it. It ain't for me because I don't share nothing. Um, but it's not. It's it wouldn't be for me. But for those that it works for, it works. But the people that I know that have done it. It's like, it's like the woman has to literally rearrange her emotions, unless she was brought up in that culture, rearrange her emotions of being second, third, or fourth, because we're territorial by nature. So I don't, I don't believe but, but, that. But, but okay. Here, um, w women, there's a subculture of women that have become comfortable with being number two. They're called side chicks. Right? Yeah, but yeah. look what you said. They become comfortable. Nobody wants to be a side chick. No, no, nope, 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 nope. That's not true. That's not Some true. Prefer. There are plenty of women that are doing the bidding to become a side chick. They're not. Or everybody is not getting caught in a web of deceit and lies. There's there's plenty of women that that see famous guys or, or just even regular guys and know that they're married, know that they're in a relationship, and are still pursuing them and will go out of their way. That's a fact. But that's what I'm that's what I'm talking about. That's safety. That's that's wounded women. See, if if I've been hurt before in the past and I don't want to be hurt the way I've been hurt before and I see men are just a means to an end, 
I have to rewire my natural makeup of being able to bond with somebody in order to put myself in a position to be that. We're not naturally wired as women to be that. Now, can we? Yes. But naturally being wired that way, we have to literally change our natural makeup in order to do that. And well, women, some women have mastered that. Why can't there be why, why can't there be multiple number ones though? They can't. So that's a hell of a bar though. <laughs> they can't. <laughs> yeah. on, she can be number one on Tuesday. They can't. Huh? They can't. She can be that's number one on Tuesday. Like even pimps had bottom bees. That's and the true. top bees. So if somebody got to play a position, somebody's gonna come up short. Pecking order. It's a pecking order thing. I just look yeah. at it like I just look at it like I, I feel like <sighs> um most people that are married cheat, right? Mm. We can we can say that, right? I don't and I think it depends on where you're from. I oh come on, we gotta be real. <laughs> I, 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 can't, I can't I can't say most people will cheat. I, I but see I view that a little bit differently. Like for instance, I don't view cheating. I if my man was to cheat on me, every man that I've dated know this April Mason's rule. If you decide to cheat, and if I decide to stay, for every indiscretion you get, if I decide to have an indiscretion, I get to. No, but we're not it's even. Not That's what I'm saying. Though. It's not. It doesn't work like that. It doesn't work like that. This. I, I, but there's a double standard. Of course, yes. Yeah, that's why y'all gotta pay. No. That's not. No. That's not how it works. That's not me. That's, that's not how it works. <laughs> oh, that's not how it works. No. <laughs> so, you, so, I, so you can go out and, and put me at risk, and then I can't. And I, Sue, I, 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 crazy. I, I decide to stay with you, but I can't Sue handle the you. When you say put you at risk, what do you, what do you mean put you at risk? If you go Her out body. and cheat, and if you have some sexual interaction with other women, you're allowed to say that, and don't say that when y'all cheat. Oh well, you, no, you, you, you cheat. No, 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 listen, that's that's the one thing to where my audience love me is because I'm not one side. Oh, yeah. Everything I say for the men, I believe in for the women as well, too. But what? But here's the thing. That's that patriarchy. So if that's the part of the patriarchy to where it's the double standard, then it should be men have to take care of their woman 100 percent because the patriarchy established that. Well, OK, so, so, it's, so it's a so, double standard. So you if, know? You take, so if, you, if, if you take care of your woman 100 percent, you can cheat in peace. If she allows that. That's not the question. If you if you take care of your woman 100 percent, if you're taking care of everything, can you cheat in peace? I can't say yes to that <laughs> because it depends on the woman. It, you're it, the it coach. Depends. You're the coach. That's what I, that, and that's what I tell them. It depends on the woman. If you decide, OK, hanging out in when I hanging out at the country club back in Atlanta, I sat with a group of um, uh, black women who were all extremely wealthy women. They were probably they were between 60 and 80. And we sat down and we had this conversation and I learned some things that when you move up into a, a different tax bracket, that cheating don't mean the same thing at this tax bracket as it does at this tax bracket. What so I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but what, what, do you mean? what do you mean? What do you mean? OK, for instance, these women knew a couple of them knew that their husband stepped out, but because they were there and they had built so much. And it was a lot at stake. They're like, okay, just don't bring it home. But it doesn't mean that he could do it. Now, there was another one. She said that when her stepped out, it was all, it was crazy. And she didn't allow that. She still chose to stay, but with boundaries. So that's why I say, depending on the woman that you ask, because I'm sitting here with women that have been married upwards of 60 years. And some of them had dealt with that. Some of them, they, they, they turned a blind eye, but not the blind eye in a, well, I'm going to act like I don't see it. It's like, no, Joker, I know what you're doing. I know what you did. However, don't bring that foolishness so I shouldn't know about it. Then there was the other lady who was older who said her husband stepped out and she wasn't having it, even though he was the breadwinner. So that's why I say it depends on um, the woman and what she's willing to accept. But then my question to you is this. Why is it just because you have money that you got to cheat? You don't. I'm just posing a question. Look, this is all entertainment. This is for entertainment purposes only. <laughs> entertainment purposes only. And I'm just trying to spark. I'm just trying to spark good conversation. <laughs> this is not reflected on my own personal views. And I don't endorse. I don't endorse anything <laughs> at all. I'm just 
So why do you think? Because I was having the conversation. No, no, no. Let me ask you a question. The, the why, why do women cheat? Why do women cheat? Mm -hmm. Typically, a woman cheats the uh, out of something that she's not emotionally getting. Typically, women don't just cheat for sex, which is probably why it's hard for men to take us back after we have cheated because they know it wasn't like one. I, one thing I learned early on being raised by a lot of men is a man can put his winky dinky in a hole and, and just because it's available and then get what he needed to get and go on about his business. And it still mean nothing. And he still love his wife. Well, that's we, that. So that's what I want to tell you as far as the question. Like I said, this is this is just. Um, for entertainment purposes only, ladies and gentlemen, but it is a good conversation for, for, I think, for women to understand the psychology of men. So men are not all the same, right? There's, mm -hmm. in, in an army, there's soldiers, there's lieutenants, and then there's generals. There's only a few generals. There can be millions of soldiers. So a general thinks different than a soldier. It doesn't make a general a better person than a soldier. It just means his brain is wired a little differently. So Throughout the time, throughout like history, you have conquerors, whether it's Alexander the Great, whether it's Pharaohs, whether it's Hannibal. These are these are men that have great ambition, great self-pride, great drive, great. They think differently like Elon Musk. They, these people think differently. That's why they're able to accomplish things that people can't even think about. Right. Mm -hmm. That's on the good side. On on the other side, for, for, for females to understand when they're dealing with somebody like that is that as a conqueror, <clears throat> There, there's certain there's certain um elements to their personality that might be different than the average person that's coming home every every day to nine to five. That may mean just the excitement, the challenge. The he, he has different like historically they were called concubines, right? Like a king had concubines. It doesn't mean that the the queen is still a queen. Right. The, the queen is still a queen. She still lives in the palace. It doesn't mean that, like you said, it's not necessarily like a, a love affair, but mm -hmm. it's it's more so a, a mental and more of a physical um, task. Right. As far as to um, to overcome and to, and to mm -hmm. conquer and to, and to soar, soar your royal oats, as they said, in coming to America. Yes. So, so. Yeah. So, so you like Napoleon Bonaparte with the baddies, right? <laughs> yeah. But this is real. Like a war drive <laughs> trial. Okay. So, so when you see in a modern day, if you see a rapper or athlete, and you saying like, "Why are you only?" This is why, right? And then you also have great access, right? With yeah. with, with, with great opportunities, yeah. great financial, you have great yeah. access that other people yeah. don't have, right? So yeah. this is just the. I mean, we just got to be honest, right? Yeah. This this is just yeah. an honest Some conversation. Never good though. So, huh? And a but too many choices is never good though. for sure. And you got to have discipline too. That what, yeah. what yes. great responsibility yes. comes great discipline. But what I'm just saying is that this is a characteristic of this type of person throughout yes. history. Throughout history, there's been the same type of characteristics for these type of people, right? Mm -hmm. So JFK, anybody, yes. there's been a lot of high profile people that mm -hmm. have that same type of behavior when it comes to women. So I just think that for the for the females. They should just have, at the very least, have that level of understanding. It doesn't mean that every single guy that you're with that's on that level is going to be like that. But it, but it's something that you should be aware of, right? Yeah, I and totally maybe agree. These, these conversations that you can have, and you can kind of find some some middle ground that's um safe. But now, my question to you is, why does it have to be that way? Like, so, because my thing is with cheating. To me, the most powerful person on the planet is a pimp. And the reason why I say that is because a pimp is going to tell you exactly what you're going to do and you're going to do it. A person that cheats to me, it's I don't think it's necessarily the cheating. It's the lies, the deception and everything that you had to do in order to do that. So why if, if a man is that powerful, right? Mm -hmm. Why can't he just say, listen, here, this is what it's going to be. Uh, and, and a lot do. Yeah, a lot do. Yeah, a lot do. A lot do. Not okay, most don't, but a lot do. that don't. Because it's a large percent that don't, because you can go on the internet any day and see a woman crying behind a man and then film them. Also, cheating. also, sometimes they might not want to hurt the person's feelings. They might not want to risk the 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 um issues of you kind of know if this is the type of person I can have this conversation with. This is the type of person I don't I can't have this conversation with, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah. me, I I I'm not for cheating because I don't want to have to look over my shoulder. I don't ever want to have to feel like I'm doing something like you know I'm saying I don't, I don't want to have to. It's, it's a it's a bad feeling. Yes. 
And then the lies that you have to keep up. With. Yeah, it's sleazy. It's a sleazy way to go about it. Yeah. But uh, you know what I think people understand with cheating, it's also the spiritual transfer that happens. I remember back in the day, I was in my 20s or early 30s. And I remember uh, there was this guy and I was trying to be a bad girl. I was trying to act like I had no emotions. I was trying to act like I, I didn't feel nothing. And I remember um, every time this guy and I, we would sleep together for five to seven days, I would be the most depressed. And I'm trying to figure mm. out what this is. And I would be curled up in a ball, just crying for nothing. That, And I'm like, what is it? Until I realized that yeah. only happened after I slept with him. From that point on in my life, mm -mm, if, I, if your spirit ain't right. And I was yeah. I was telling um, my driver today, I said, you know what? I said, you know what you've been doing? I said, you know what you got to do? I said, if a woman is not good for your peace legacy portfolio, she shouldn't even get the deal. Well, what's the portfolio part about? I've never heard that before. Well, portfolio means she's helping you make money. She's it's, helping you make money? Meaning not, not anything that she's doing, but what she's being to you. One other thing, think about this. A lot of men go to the strip club, not for sex, but for the feminine energy that it brings. Feminine energy is creative. Why do you think so many men have have um, business meetings, closing multi-million dollar deals at the strip club? It's not the sex. It's the energy that feminine women bring, well, the femininity part of it that they bring. They come, they go to this strip club. It's girls. They're being nice. They're getting their ego strokes. They're, somebody's listening to them. All of this is going on. And so I, my last book, I actually wrote a whole chapter because I went to, I, I was a person that was having this conversation with a, a man all about this at the strip club. Cause they were like, it's April, you gonna go to the strip club with us? So we ended up having to go to, um, where were we? We were in Miami. We were, uh, we brought, huh? We'll be trapped. That, that's where I was. Now, I didn't know anything about the, the strip club. So I was with, Ross took us all to the game. We went to the Falcons versus the Miami game. After the game, the fellas was like, oh, we going to the strip club. I said, oh, I'm going back to my hotel, child. That ain't, that ain't, that ain't what I do. No, you need to come. You need to come. And so one of the guys that was there, uh, he was one of the founders of Fortnite, the game. Black guy. Pretty young black guy. And we were like, ah, I said, no, I don't know if I want to go because I don't, I don't want all that on me. Like, I just wasn't feeling that. Yeah. I went anyway. So before we got in, they gave me strip club etiquette. Don't touch their money. Don't do this. Don't do that. All of it. So we in there. And this is what I remember the most. The men that I was there with, I'm standing in the middle up against the bar. And I had men to my right, men to my left. They're all telling me their relationship issues right there in the strip club. And I'm like, I start really tuning in to pay attention. It was naked girls everywhere. And I'm just like, okay, but you're telling me your heart. You're getting vulnerable in this particular place. So it made me see things differently when it comes to the strip club. And it also showed me that men don't necessarily, not all, but a lot of them go there for the feminine experience that they are getting from, the, from women that they don't get on their day to day or even in their relationships. So it has nothing to do with, I want to sleep with her. It's the experience. It's an invisible experience that men get from women. Well, that's something before we leave, that's something I, I definitely want to talk about because that's something that I don't think is talked about enough where I've heard people say like, you know, they've um, go to strip clubs or even if they have other women outside their relationship, it's not so much about the sex part of it. It's about the way that the woman makes them feel. Yeah, like, mm -hmm. Strippers, they they it's a psychological play, right? They they making mm -hmm. you feel like you're like the king because they're trying to get your money, but that's part of the play. So they're gonna they're gonna caress your shoulder, they're gonna talk to you. Yeah. You're not you're not gonna have sex with a stripper in a strip club, right? Mm -hmm. But you're gonna give her money because it's like outside of the lap dance, it's just it's the it's the comfort that she's provided, right? Yeah. And the same yeah. thing with a lot of people that's actually um cheating it's not necessarily that they're cheating just because they want to have sex but they mm -hmm. it's, it's peace it's comfort it's somebody that they can go and it's it's a stress-free zone because they don't got to worry about paying bills it's not like a relationship mm -hmm. right so you get to have all the good aspects of it without having the, the drama so what do you say to women how do they keep that fire in their romance when you're 10 years in five years and have a kid and it's not like you still are in the first dating phase that right there, what you just said, is how. 
the reason why men are willing to pay for that feeling, like think about that. They're willing to pay to feel this way. So imagine if you could give that at home. No, you don't have to be walking around in your little heels and all that every day. But the, the it helps. It helped. Well, you know what my son-in-law said? He called me one day. He said, Ma, do you know that your daughter worked from her office with lingerie on every day in the house? Do you know that? I said, <laughs> yeah. said really? Right. I said, because that's what her mama do. So that's what she saw her mama doing. So that's what I said. Did she cook with her little heels on and her little lounge, little short, little outfits? He said, yeah. And I said, is that why you take good care of my daughter the way that you do? He was like, listen, I don't let the kids bother her. I don't do that. One thing I learned is everything a man does is to make sure he gets that from you. And, and a lot of women, they say, well, he don't help me with the kids. He don't this. And what I find sure enough, there are men that don't help. But watching my son-in-law and how he is with my daughter, what he did is he said, all right, I'm going to put you in a position to where you don't have no excuses to be able to be free to me when I need you. Big facts. And if not, you got to go. go and, mm -hmm. and I told my daughter, um, I said, let me tell you something about your, your, her fiance at the time. I said, when he become your husband, let me tell you something. He's the job. I said, him buying you the house, him taking all of the burdens off you. My daughter works for me full time. He thinks that's play money. That's like volunteer work. Him buying you this big house so you can have the kitchen that you want. When you're in a bathtub and the kids bothering you, him getting the kids away and letting you taking you to the spa, sending you to the spa. I said, understand, that's for him. That's not for that's not for you, because he's doing this because he wants to continue to get that feminine experience from you. Mm -hmm. So there's nothing hindering what he gets. My son-in-law, he was already making six figures when he met my daughter. He's quadrupled that because of what she's being to him. He's a software engineer. He's going through it at home. I mean, at home because he works from home. She'll come sit on his lap. Hey, honey, what's going All on? Right. These people, and she he come, she's come rub his temples. Oh, honey, you, let me go get you some lunch because you in here going crazy on these people. And she just sit on his lap with her little lingerie on or her little cute little lounge clothes. That's another thing. I taught my daughter and I teach my women never walk around looking crazy. Listen, y'all get the soft girl life if y'all act soft and throw that shit back every day. Simple formula. Well, you know, it's it's really it's really not difficult. But here's Come the on. thing: that makes it difficult. They don't know the type of man, how to vet a man to figure out if he's the type that can accept what they're giving. You hear a lot of women say, "I gave him this, I gave him that, I gave him this." That's because you were in the mother energy, not the nurture energy. That's so true. you gave like a mama. Well. Show me what son at especially is going. It gives back to the mom at that level, like a husband. You no, know, you're doing everything. You're not nurturing him. Um, you are mothering him. So you got to vet who to give that to. Just like you have to vet to see if he has potential or is he operating in his potential. Y'all can't be mad because well, that's all he had potential, but he didn't live up to it. That's not his fault. I think we have to start accepting people for who they are and see if they're a fit for us and don't try to make them a fit because and one of the things that my the guys have a problem with is trying to make woman a woman a fit because she look good and she got a big boob yeah i'm like oh, she wow. don't fit you know one of my clients that he he invited me to an event he told he told me matter of fact it was at y'all's first conference and investment i was backstage and there was one my one of my clients was on your stage <laughs> I ain't going to say what was, but he was on your stage. Prior to that event, he told me about this girl that he was uh, seeing. I hadn't met her. It was two months prior. After what he told me, I said, mm-mm. Mm. It's a no. He said, what you mean? I said, What made her no? Huh? What made it a no? What made her know it because what he and I were, had been working through and had been coaching. Gotcha. And he didn't understand the difference from a feminine woman and a feminine looking woman. Mm. He didn't understand the difference. No, so I, I, I had to learn that. I had to learn that lesson. Yeah, too. yeah, yeah. Because they can present well, and so as he's talking to me and what we're working on, I'm like, mm -mm. he said, well, "What do you mean?" I said, "You asked me, and I'm telling you no." Fast forward, I wasn't going to invest fast because um, I think I was going to be out of town, and then last minute, uh, the boss of conference folks were like, "Let's go." All right, so I went. I'm backstage. And he walks up to me. Oh my God, I just love you so much. And isn't that third? 
he's with her. I didn't know it was her. He said, I, this is Miss April. I love her. She's, and he's bowing down the whole nine. The girls, she's at like this. Called, oh. right? Oh, hi. <laughs> That's the water, yo. You lost where you started. So later on, that, that next day, I text him. I said, hey, love, call me when you have a moment. So about an hour later, he FaceTimed. He said, what you got? I said, all right, here's the deal. As your coach, my job is not to tell you what to do. Mm -hmm. It's just to coach you through and give you, you know, my pieces and, you know, my, my suggestions. He said, what do you think about her? I said, this is still a no. He said, well, why? I said, number one, you sat back and said, this is Miss April. I love her. This is what you said. If you hear the man telling you this is somebody he holds in high regard and you don't try to get to know that person, that's a problem. Me too. I said, number two, based upon who her mentor is, baby, she ain't what you think she is. Who's a mentor? I'm Brittany not Renner. <laughs> Brittany Renner. Hey, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, and number three, after we you introduced her, I said, oh, you know, Miss Mason is very well connected. And I made a couple of phone calls. Oh, did the research. I, mm. Yeah. Once I found out who it was, I did my research that night. Because they oh, don't pay me to to, to 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 sugarcoat it. So I said, hold on, let me do my research. So I made a couple of phone calls. I said, let me just say this. You're single. Um, majority of your people are not. And from what I'm hearing, uh, all these folks are going to try to make a play for you because of who you're connected to. I said, be very careful. Mm. And I would not bring her into the circle. I said, I'm going to leave it at that. I said, but I did my own research. Fast forward about that was that it was August. So yep. we had to. So September, it was in September. Uh, Ross for the Boston Conference alumni, he had a, a dinner at the house. So he walks in. I said, oh, hey, where, where, you, where your little friend at? Not your little friend. She's not here, but, she, you know, she's at the house. But she's not here. I said, oh, you, you, you didn't bring your little friend to the circle? He said, no, I heard you. <laughs> oh, don't. Or somebody might have targeted. Somebody might have sniped her. Somebody might have. She might have got caught in the crossfire. Mm. Well, well, she didn't. How would she know? No, how would he know, right? Oh, how would he know? Like she, she might have got taken off. Like I gotta go get my hair done. Play. I gotta get my hair done. Play. I don't know. That I don't think so. <laughs> I gotta get my <laughs> hair done. My, my hair done. Now she, she, she this one wanted him to Fourteenth? Like, nah, not for five hours. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I don't know. Don't worry, he ain't that far from downtown. Like watch. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I, I hear you. Yeah, uh, you took four hundred. The Alpharetta then came back. That don't even make sense. Where you at? Yeah, I know this one wanted him too bad for that. This is she, she wanted okay. him too bad. But that's typically what my guy clients will do. Once we work together, and then they show me, they will invite me over to a a get together or something, so I can meet, so I can at least see and watch the woman and see. And I'll just shake my head, yes or no. If I shake my head, no, they be like, why? But she's fine. I said that's what we've been working on. The last five women you've been with look the same, and this is the same issue. So we gotta, we have to go. Uh, we we gotta go deeper, at, you know, at this stage. Oh, the mentor wasn't nothing. Yeah, we're gonna be quiet, but <laughs> the mentor knew. We put two and two together. Got four. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, bro. Listen, li listen. That ain't the one. So for what you saying? That ain't. That ain't. That ain't. That ain't it. That ain't it. That ain't but, it. We were there though. We huh? were talk like, no, nah, this ain't the one. So how does somebody, yeah. how does somebody acquire your serve? Like, I'm interested in this, right? As far as like, yeah. this is just the, because this is like Hitch. You're like, you're like Will Smith and Hitch almost. Mm -hmm. So, you, you, you're like a consultant for people to find somebody or to be the perfect person to attract somebody. Well, what I do is I help men break their toxic relationship or choices in women. And I help them be able to identify a woman that's good for his peace, legacy and portfolio and what she will have. I help them do that. And then I do have a large women's organization and I have an academy. So everybody want to hook up with my girls because they know the training that they're going through. So, you know, if, if somebody in our organization fits, I'll do an introduction, but typically I, sh I have to break 
to help them break the habit of their toxic patterns. And it typically starts with the mother and being so caught up in the visual of what you want this woman to be. It's like, she ain't it, she don't have it. And I don't think men understand at the level, when you are a high performing, high earning man like that, you got to be very careful because those guys have typically been married, you know, on their second or third marriage. And those typically are the men that I work with. Um, I remember um, when we were at that game in Miami, Ross said, April, I need you to go meet him. I'm like, well, who was he? He said, he the mayor. And I said, OK. And I go over there and meet him. I said, hey, I was told that we needed to meet. And he asked me what I did. And I told him what I did on the woman's side. Well, one of the guys that said, April, you need to turn this thing you do with the biz with the men into a business. He looked at me and said, tell him what else you do. I said, well, I help men, you know, stop making poor relationship choices and how to identify a woman that's good for his peace legacy your portfolio. The mayor said, oh, I'm on my second marriage. I need your help. Mm. So that's typically how it happens. Um, but I do have a website called thefeminineear.com because that's what I am uh, to those guys. I end up just being that ear and I meet them for those that get the VIP experience. I meet them wherever they are. So I, whether it's a golf course, whether it's fishing, whether it's uh, the strip club, whatever their environment is, there's no judgment. And we really get to dive deep. And ladies, for those of you watching, I got to say, I understand what you've been through, but a lot of these men, they're mush and they just really are very tender. And when you hear their story and when you hear the heartbreak that they've gone through or, or not being taught what it means to be that kind of man, to know how to make a woman feel seen, her protected and provided for because they didn't have a father or they didn't see their mother chosen or anything like that. It allows me, it gives me a little bit more empathy. I'm not saying what's, what men do is, is right all the time, but it allows me to have a little bit more grace because I'm able to sit there and have that conversation. Everybody's not you know, given that opportunity, but there's a lot of wounded men out here. And I know people will say, well, you need to be whole first. None of us are whole. None of us are whole. If we were whole, you know, we would know what we do. And none of us, I believe that if you're not used to having a good woman in your life, it takes you doing a little bit of self-reflecting, a little bit of work for one to come into your life. And she shows you what a good woman is. I don't care how many books you read, conferences you go through. I don't care. I got over 50 to 80 courses. You can take all my courses, read all my books, but guess what? None of that matters until you actually put yourself in a position to be loved on properly. And it's going to being loved on properly triggers you. If you haven't had, if you haven't experienced it, how do I know this? Cause I, everything I teach, I've had to go through when I remember being in a, a really bad, bad marriage, I had to learn how to allow somebody to love me. But I, what I was doing, I want the, the guy that wasn't the good guy, my system was still attracted to that. I remember one held my hand and I felt, you know, I'm like, oh my God, I, he just, oh, it was just ugly. Oh my God, I, he just, he just made my skin crawl. But it was not him making my skin crawl. It was the fact that I wasn't, my, my subconscious has not been programmed to be loved properly. So the guy that gives you all of the, the on the um, not being, uh, what do you call it? Um, you don't know where he's at, his patterns, the ups and down, the roller coasters and all that. You're attracted to that because you're attracted to drama. Typically, the good guy is boring. And I don't mean boring because he's a boring person, but he's calm. There is no up and down. He does what he says he's going to do. He show, it's, But it's the same thing with men. I, I have dealt with men that have good women or have met a good woman and like, no, nah, Miss April, something is up. She too good. I'm like, is she? Because they're waiting for the shoe to fall. So what they'll end up doing is sabotaging it because they haven't programmed their subconscious mind for good love. And I see a lot of men doing that. And it's like, we all think we got a bunch of options. But do we have a bunch of quality options? Yeah, quality is different. Quality. April, it's been a pleasure. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Um, yes, we definitely have to connect again. You actually provide a lot of insight that even I, I learned yeah. some stuff from a lot this conversation. So make sure you buy the book, follow her on Instagram and all the socials, and um, we will be talking soon. Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. All right, thank you. Bye bye. Right. Shout out to <laughs> April. That was an interesting conversation. Yeah, yeah, it was a great one. I uh, learned a lot. Peace portfolio. What was the other P? 
she left the pee out. You know what I mean? But <laughs> pushing pee. Oh, uh, the thing about it, the, the one thing about it is invest fest, anything can happen. Crazy behind the scenes story, yo. <laughs> Get your tickets. Get your tickets. You may find out that the love of your life shouldn't be the love of your life. It's, it, could save, it could save you in the long run. It saved a ton. It could hey, save you in the long run. Girl admires or is mentored by that matters a lot. Who she's taking it. That's why I always tell you got to get the toxic energy away. You can't, yeah. the blind can't, it's the blind leading the blind. If you're yeah. getting led by somebody who's crazy, yeah, toxic. how you expect them to actually, you know, what kind of information are they getting provided? <sighs> wow. The thing about the, the mom not being chosen, that's crazy. That's crazy. That, that, that was wild. That's wow. is she has some interesting, some hot takes. That was oh, so you can't be boring though. I know the calm thing. You still gotta be a vibe though. Oh, you, you gotta, be gotta be a vibe. Vibe mania. Vibe mania. For real. Um, shout out to shout out to April, man. She was actually a very she good guest. And um, I wasn't like overly familiar with her. I started researching her after people recommended her, yeah. and I, I, I liked her content. But um, I'm gonna definitely be following her oh, moving yeah. forward. For yeah, sure. I, I rock I like her energy. Feminine energy, too. Very charismatic, very cool. You, you believe that money take that the money don't matter? I didn't get a chance to speak about that, but I feel like, you know, I come from a working class environment, right? So I just see every everything that I'm around. Every, like, that's, I don't come from a rich environment. I come from a working class environment. And I didn't see a lot of submissive women in my environment. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's because the men didn't provide enough for them. Enough. They provided they provided enough for them. You know, they had a marriage, they had a families, and you know, they might be a secretary, they might be a school teacher, but <laughs> you're not gonna tell me that money does not matter. <laughs> I'm not gonna believe that. I'm not trying to say that money is everything. It's you not everything. You, it you, does have, you could have a successful marriage if you're not rich. I one hundred percent. But you're not gonna sit here and tell me that money doesn't matter yeah doesn't help in the situation big facts <laughs> every <laughs> just for their emotional safety you know hey things are covered he got it or you know even if you like yo don't don't work cool just work in the business stuff, like it matters stop it matters. stop it. stop like let's yeah. be honest 2024 let's just be honest yeah right we can have honest conversation yeah but the trade-off you gotta so you have to list for women Fellas, you got to come up with your own list of you got to be a good dude, man. That dream life, though. You got to be a good person, man. Like, be a good dude. Like, if you're going to say something, do what you're going to say, right? Don't say anything. I hate people that say stuff and never do it. As a man, if you tell a woman you're going to do something, then do it, right? Yeah. Have some level of um, stand up character about yourself, right? Like, yeah. Pro have some level of provision. You might not be able to pay for every single thing, but take pride in wanting to provide. Like you go to the restaurant, pay the bill. Like you know what I'm saying? Like ask if she needs something. Ask if you can help. Like you hear her if you hear her complaining about something. This is what I learned. A woman complaining about something or, or a woman vocal if a woman vocally says something to you, that means that she's asking for help. Yeah. Right. That's opportunity to help. Yeah. If she says, like, damn, like, you know, I uh, I, I got to put this painting up, but I'm not really tall enough to hook it on the nail. That's her way of asking, can you put the painting up or can you have somebody come and put the painting up for me? She's not going to say it. Yeah. Some people will. Some people will just ask you, but a lot of yeah. times they're not going to say it. But it's like if they're, vocal, her. Yeah. if they're vocal enough to say something, especially if they say something multiple times, if they're vocal enough to say something multiple times, that's their way of asking. So if you can, sometimes you can't. But if you can, try to help. If that's your girl, like if if you rocking with her like that, like girl, girl, yeah, yeah. it's not, not just for something you just met. But if that's your girl, girl, that's yeah, your baby. You know if it, like I said, if it's if it's something, if you could help somebody, right? Like it's like a, it's not something you might have to send somebody a Chipotle burrito for lunch, right? It's it's the thought that counts. It's the thought that counts, yo. It's the, <laughs> the, the, counts. it's the little the little yeah. things go a long way in life. How do you give the uh, person? the world without them becoming entitled or spoiled rotten by it though. That's the thing. That's the thing. 
That's the that's the age old question that I think um, nobody has figured out yet. But I think it's the character of the woman, right? It's the character of the woman. I don't think it's nothing. It's I think it's like children, right? Of course, you want to make them. It's difficult, right? Because it's like, all right, you pay for something. I think it's tacky to tell somebody how much something cost. Yeah. I take you on a vacation. I do this, that, and the third. I think it's tacky for me to show you the receipt of like, yo, this cost ten thousand dollars for us to go to, you know, Antigua for a week and um but i feel like if you have if, if if they have some level of understanding that yeah. what it took for you to get that right because sometimes they just see like what you have and it's like okay now nah, they they see you wake up at five o'clock in the morning they see you grind till 12 o'clock at night they yeah, stay a lot of they see the sacrifices that you made and it's like if you thought enough of them to share a moment with them then if you're a good person you should you should you should you should be grateful you should be you should have some level of appreciation but it's hard it's hard to teach somebody that and what happens is that the more you do that the less appreciation a person has it's just human nature the more like if you give somebody a hundred dollars right the first time you give them a hundred dollars they're gonna be like thank you thank you like i love you so much after the tenth time it's it's a it's a lukewarm i appreciate yeah. it thank you bro after the hundredth time it's you just get it and you don't you give me seven thousand and then the hundredth and one time you don't yeah. get it to them now it's resentment. Like, where's my hundred dollars? You just get used to it. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's difficult. It's a difficult situation for sure. Something we gotta figure out. But ladies stay in your feminine. That's the real thing. Like, if the ladies just stay feminine, oh my God, like you'll get the, the ladies. All you all you gotta do is stay in your feminine energy, stay in your submissive bag. And like um, you're good. For me, like, you know what I'm saying? Like. No. I'm always going to reward. I'm always going going to reward the submissive vibe. Lord, yeah. I'm just going to reward that because it's 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 needed yeah. in this world. But it feel like all all the knuckleheads and like baddies and the thotties winning, but they not in real life. Trust trust me. Trust nah. me. Struggle bus. Get you a good one, man. Get you a good one. Yep. Um. And just the nuns know, will be at Invest Fest. So get your tickets. The nuns will be at Invest Fest and. The exotic dancers will be at Invest Fest too. So if you want to trick off your money, that's an option. I, Ladies, two <laughs> simps, two simmies, you can get you about 12 simps. Watch your mentor. Watch your mentor. Watch your girl's mentor. Watch it. If if you meet a girl at Invest Fest, yeah. Since this is a this is this happened in real life. Yep. Now don't, don't watch her. <laughs> Ask your girl who's your mentor. Boy. Research the mentor. Big bird. Big mm -hmm. bird. <laughs> Listen, you, you, whoever you get guidance from, if that fruit falls off the tree, and be careful, fellas too, ladies, you gotta look who you look up to. Right. Yes. Before you yeah. check a man, check your girl. Oh, That's big fat. Right. Yeah, I don't you should never check the dude. Check your girl. No, I'm just saying, just in life. Oh yeah, yeah. Like if you got aggressive energy towards yeah. a man, check your girl first because it might be some. It might be some. <laughs> Shoot, yeah, it's going Some on. finagling. <laughs> Eternally. <laughs> Click on the behind the scenes, ain't it? The last look, I'm the last of your concerns, bro. Yeah, like you said, you, if you got a six hour to get bangs, hey, <laughs> to, to, to cut Hot some bangs. massages don't take that long, bro. <laughs> cut bangs. I'm just letting you a, know. A French manicure. Hey, I know traffic bad in the best fest. <laughs> Fellas, don't let it get that off. I mean, it was traffic there because you know, <laughs> we know, <laughs> ain't no side conferences in Dunwoody now. You better be careful. There it goes, bro. <laughs> Get the mastermind. The satellite event. The satellite event. <laughs> hey, and bucket. Be careful. <laughs> No, I'm going to get there at three, you know. Oh, I went to okay. the best, best brunch. How's there a brunch when it's an all day event? For a. Be mindful. Somebody get eight. Be <laughs> Hey, what's on? Let y'all know. Be careful. What's on the menu? <laughs> <laughs> Be careful. Oh, These boy. are just jokes written by eighty five South, but not fact. telling you no lies, yo. More than French mm. toast on the menu. All right, all right, Jay, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is this has been an enjoyable enjoyable episode. Education. Episode. This is actually a very educational show. This show has actually turned into something that 
is a hybrid of entertainment and education. And education is needed. There's a lot of education. There's a lot of outside. The alcohol is outside education. Like this conversation is outside education, right? This is outside. You're not going to find this in school. You're not going to find this on, on like the finance books, but this is important to your life. How to become a successful man in a relationship, how to become a successful woman in a relationship. Vitally important. I mean, because we need more love, we need more black love, we need more black wealth, right? So if you can't have generational wealth without the love component, right? You gotta have love, earn your love. Yeah. Earn your love. So backstage. <laughs> the backstage play. The hey. introduction play. Hey, listen, fellas, you got you gotta good have good female counsel. If the females in your circle don't rock with your girl, there's a reason why. Damn. Gotta be careful. Damn. Gotta be careful. What do I know? Gots to be careful. Fire fast. <laughs> <laughs> we Drop turned them off quick, we, boy. We, Just, we, gonna, we gonna turn this into fire festival. Uh, big facts. Hey, <laughs> gotta go. Spray this thing up real quick. Gotta All go. All right. All right, ladies and gentlemen. It's been real. Yeah. Love. Peace out to everybody. Love.